Welcome to the 2021 Alliance of Resident Theaters New York Gala. It's been a tough year, and we want to acknowledge that the lack of certainty and loss presented by the pandemic, coupled with our nation's reckoning with racial justice, makes celebrating both difficult and all the more necessary. Coming together with you to tell our stories, embrace our differences, and share space is integral to making theater and to our way forward together. My name is Deidre Harrington, and I'm one of the producing artistic leaders of the Movement Theater Company, an Art New York member and the board co-chair. We are so glad you are here. And my name is Risa Shoup. For the past nine months, it has been my honor to serve as the Interim Executive Director of Art New York. Now, before we get into tonight's revelry, we have some important people and history to recognize. First, a heartfelt thanks to our honorees. Penny Jackson, Ali Stroker, and Rachel Chafkin. Storytellers, meaning makers, advocates, leaders, collaborators, and pillars of strength and vulnerability. Three women who have helped shape art New York and theater in New York City and around the country. And we also want to share a land acknowledgement with all of you. This land acknowledgement is frequently used by the Art New York staff before internal convenings and public programs. We are still on our journey to find a standard land acknowledgement for our organization. The first paragraph was written by our former staff member and good friend, Hope Chavez, and has been adjusted slightly over the years. The second paragraph discussing virtual space was written by Adrian Wong of Spiderweb Show in Ontario, Canada. I would like to take this time to acknowledge that wherever we are currently located on Turtle Island, otherwise known as North America, we are on occupied territory. Art New York's membership in the five boroughs of New York City operates on the unceded ancestral land of the Lenape, Wappinger, Canarsie, Rockaway, and Matinecock communities. I want to honor and celebrate all of these indigenous communities, their elders past and present, as well as future generations. I also want to take this time to acknowledge that after there was stolen land, there were stolen people. I want to honor the generations of displaced and enslaved people that built and continue to build the country that we occupy today. Since we are gathered today in virtual space, let's also take a moment to consider the legacies of colonization embedded within the technologies, structures, and ways of thinking we use every day. We're using equipment and high-speed internet not available in many indigenous communities. Even the technologies that are central to much of the art that art we make leave significant carbon footprints, contributing to changing climates that disproportionately affect indigenous peoples worldwide. I invite you to join me in acknowledging all this, as well as our shared responsibility to make good of this time and for each of us to consider our roles in reconciliation, decolonization, anti-racism and allyship. Thank you. To learn more about whose land you are on, you can go to native-land.ca forward slash. Tonight, we kick off four nights of gala events celebrating a changed and strengthened Art New York. And celebrating that Art New York's members and the NYC theater community, including each and every one of you, are unstoppable. Theater making never stopped just because theaters closed due to the pandemic. And Art New York continues to be here for you. What is Art New York? Over nearly 50 years, the Alliance of Resident Theaters New York, or Art New York, has earned its reputation as a leader in providing progressive services to the people that make theater. Artists, designers, Administrators, New Yorkers, 
and we have done it all with your support. From shared office and rehearsal spaces to technical assistance programs for emerging theaters, Art New York is an expert in the needs of the New York City nonprofit theater community. Together with you, we help theater companies hone their skills by providing educational workshops, one-on-one -on -one consultations, and the library of resources. Art New York helps theater makers finance their creative goals through grant programs and strategic cash flow loans. And we lead advocacy efforts to defend arts funding at the state and city level. Art New York connects theater companies to the people they need to make their work happen. Colleagues, employees, advisors, interpreters, intimacy choreographers, facilitators, volunteers, audiences, and you. Training, funding, advocacy, community, opportunity. Art New York is New York Theater. In our current world of shifting COVID infection rates, a revolution for racial justice, political animosity, the escalating climate crisis, and the impact these realities continue to wield. Does off and off off-Broadway theater even matter? Consider the impact of theater in our city. According to a November 2019 New York Times article, theaters, not including Broadway, are responsible for $584 million in direct economic impact every year and an estimated $1.3 billion in direct and indirect benefits. Since COVID hit in March 2020, our industry has been hemorrhaging production revenue and employment was non-existent. There was an exodus of our creative community to less expensive areas upstate and across the country. Business, industry, political, and cultural experts agree that theater will play a major role in the economic rebuilding and healing of New York City as we recover from COVID and once post-COVID life begins. Off and Off Off-Broadway Theaters, the lifeblood of the New York City theater industry, and an artistic and financial engine that helps drive Broadway and the larger cultural economy will need to survive and thrive. This is where Art New York comes in. Art New York is at a true inflection moment in responding to the needs of our shared community. What some might call the role of a lifetime but we can't go it alone. At Art New York, our members, our staff, and you, theater makers, advocates, supporters, and audiences are our greatest resource. To ensure we are able to meet the needs of artists and ensure theater continues to be made, Art New York is making deep investments in leadership, staff development, facilities, and programming. We need you with us to make your gift Text A-R-T-N-Y to 44321 or follow the link in the video description to make your gift online. Demand for our programs and services is at an all-time high. Our members reach out to our staff each and every day for guidance, insight, and resources to meet our financial constraints and provide increased programming and services for our NYC theater artists. We need your support. Any gift you can make today will make a difference for New York City Theater. Hey, our New York family, this is Jonathan McCory. I am the Executive Artistic Director of National Black Theater. Hi, I'm Natasha Sinha. I'm Associate Artistic Director of Playwrights Horizons and co-founder of Beehive Dramaturgy Studio. I'm May Ann Teo, Artistic Director of Musical Theater Factory, where we are committed to dismantling oppressive ideologies towards collective liberation through making new musicals. I'm the founder and artistic director of Member Theatre New Georges and the president of the Art New York Board. My name is Muriel Miguel, Bright Sun, and Waga Nadili. That's all my names. I am the director of Spider Woman Theatre, the oldest ongoing native feminist theatre group in the States and maybe the world. I'm Ali Stroker. I am an actress, a singer, and an advocate. Hi, everyone. This is Penny Jackson. 
Hi, I am Rachel Chapkin, she, her pronouns. I am a director, sometime writer, dramaturg, and artistic director of a collaborative ensemble called The Team. I walked into New York in 1992 on the advice of a friend of a friend. The first show I produced got great reviews and I thought, oh no, I think I have to keep this theater company thing going. I think I walked in and I just said, help! Two years later, 1994, we were part of the very first class of Nancy Quinn Fund theaters and grantees. Now the Dime Community Bank Fund. That's the Art New York initiative responsible for the growth and the survival of the smallest theaters, making the New York City theater ecosystem ever richer and more diverse. When we were first starting out, we turned to Art New York for affordable rehearsal space, and the Creative Space Grant is still how we make a ton of our work today. Art New York has served me because Theater should be a resource community, and Art New York has invested so much in artists and companies, has put forward so many resources and grant opportunities that allow us to do our work and to increase the, you know, foundational support that's necessary um, to live lives as theater makers. And when I think of Art New York, I think of a resilient institution that has helped to give an arts administrator like me the formative tools to be able to lead, um, to imagine and to envision a cultural landscape that would allow for black artists uh, to do the work that they want to do to heal their communities. Art New York services and community building have been invaluable to me and our team at MTF. From the diversifying our organizations with the Rabin Group, to round tables where I learned best practices with fellow artistic leaders, to having space for our artists to make, and the grant resources for our small organization to have access to Mellon funding was absolutely transformative. They are a hub for connections, for resource sharing, peer coalition building, and more, all of which is invaluable to a small company like the team, which can eventually feel like it's sort of floating out in the blue. It is the second home for me for developing plays, for hearing plays, for auditioning actors, and for participating in the workshops. Grants, the webinars, COVID relief. By including me in a panel over the past year, that has inspired so much of my thinking and my dreaming about what theater can look like in the future. I want theater to begin to understand its positionality as um, a civic engagement institution that must dismantle its notion of racism, of anti-anything, um, particularly anti-black, anti-Semitic, anti-homophobic, anti-Asian, just anti-anything, and really start to center the humanistic apparatus of why art was created in the first place. We're always working counter to traditional structures as a downtown theater company, so we see a welcome opportunity to investigate what that means now as the process-driven theater makers we are. We're determined to look at how our practices have evolved since 1992, which is a lot, and what change will be required of us and to move into a new era. I think that theater industry has been and continues to be in a profound state of evolution rooted in the fight for equity and justice. We are the incubator for community to discourse the incubator for the intersectionality of our community to love each other. And I think that if we can start to center that conversation, um, we can radically start to imagine a universe, a space, a community, a location um, that can start to reflect uh, not our um, oppression, but potentially our liberation. Art New York is leading the theater industry in exactly what I hope for for the future. A field which centers care for the most vulnerable, that is engaged in conscious action, that is awake to our beautiful complexity, and is a temple of joy and collective liberation. It's the need for radical reappropriation of funding at federal levels, at state levels, at city levels, as well as private funding and foundations. I want to keep an energy of inquiry and spirit alive and center. I want our theater community to reprioritize so that budgets and philosophies, you know, tangibly support a much wider range of stories and storytellers and kinds of storytelling. I think we would like Native theater to have more attention in New York City. I think what Native theater in New York City needs is a space of their own. A really 
reinvigorated focus um, supporting grassroots and smaller organizations with a particular focus on those voices um, that have been historically marginalized. So black artists, indigenous artists, artists of color, artists with disabilities, as well as artists hailing from and living and working in low income communities, wherever they might be across the country. I think we're here as theater makers to engage with questions, mysteries, complexities, intentionally different angles, shifts in perspectives. Those are what we're really wrestling with the human mystic apparatus of why art was created in the first place. What will I do to implement this change? I will build with you. I will not be deterred. And we will flourish together in abundance. I'm excited about the oppor opportunity for theater to come back and really center the human stories that need to be shared, not the oppressive stories that need to be shared, and really grow to a space that allows for us to have a deeper sense of empathy and curiosity for society, for our own humanity, and for the communities that we know and we don't know. I hope and dream that theater in the future will include more disabled actors and more disabled theater makers, and we will see authentic representation on stage. Let's move forward into this next era of theater with basic care and understandings of systemic racism and capitalism and imperialism. And of course, always really generative, fascinating, juicy, rich, deep questions. I can't wait for theater to begin again. And I will be there cheering along with everyone else. Art New York has been my grad school, my resource mine, my source of colleagues who have now been friends over decades. Art New York is really a major connector and tether to the wider community and is a source of fellowship and mutual aid and collective wisdom, particularly among small and grassroots organizations. It's truly a service organization in that way. Thank you, Art New York. Thank you to Art New York. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kit Yan, and I use they, he, and she pronouns. And I'm Melissa Lee, she, her, hers. And we are the creators of Interstate. Interstate is a new musical based on our real life adventures touring and performing in a queer and trans Asian American band from 2008 to 2010. What started out as a journey to share our art with our community became a story of self-love and healing. In 2012, nine years ago, we decided to turn this story into a musical we had a rough draft of Act One that we wanted to share with our community, but we didn't have anywhere to present it. That's when our good friend Mo Angelos stepped in and found us space at Art New York. This was where our theater journey began and where our communities gathered to share art and perspectives, which allowed our story to grow into what it is today. So we are absolutely honored to be here to support the incredible organization that has supported us and countless other projects that make New York a rich landscape of artistry. Thank you so much, Art New York. Now, to introduce the song. In Interstate, Dash and Adrian are queer performers driving cross country on their first national tour. In Act One, they spend much of their time living out their dream of touring, while their biggest fan, Henry, a 16-year-old transgender kid from Kentucky, follows their adventures. In this song, which occurs towards the end of the act, Dash recalls a loving memory about Adrian, discovers some hidden feelings, and makes a bold move. Without further ado, we are so excited to have the incredible Kai Alexander Judd and Dickie Hartz join us to perform Loser Dumplings. I wanna try I wanna try this on my own I didn't mind I didn't mind being alone Till the day she changed my life It was that one day, a chilly Sunday Last year's poetry slam I 
made it to the finals, made it all the way to the end. My palms were sweating, my heart was dreading. Adrian was my number one fan. She watched me lose the title to another white guy again. By just two points, by two points, I lost. She said, boy, I got you covered, don't you worry, don't be sad. She smiled at me, took out a bag, and I said, what the hell is that? She said, loser dumplings, dumplings only losers get. Disappointment and regret, never tasted so good. Each one made with love by hand, and now I understand. The thing about winning is not if I did, but that someone believed I could. She always pushed me, saw what I could be, believed that I could be great. She knew that I could create poems that could change the world. Adrian knew. This, said I could do this Her voice a gift and my guide With her hand in mine The look in her eyes showed nothing but love By just two points, just two points away I'd lost two points but look what I've gained She said thank God you didn't win it Or this whole thing have been tossed because this girl made them special for the boy who lost. She made me loser dumplings, dumplings only losers get. Disappointment and regret never tasted so good. Each one made with love by hand, and now I understand that the thing about winning. If I did, but that someone believed, and I'm realizing it now. I've been such a fool, and I'm realizing it now. What you have meant to me. Sometimes we don't notice the days passing by, and I see a face in a different light. I know I love you. I really loved you this whole time. Loser dumplings, dumplings only losers get. If I don't tell you, I'd regret not saying a word. To be your man, I'll take a chance. Cause now I understand that the thing about winning is not if I did. But that one girl believed I could. Thank you so much for attending and to everyone who was able to make a donation this evening. The services provided by Art New York are essential to New York City theater thriving. Since spring of 2020, Art New York has answered the demand for more programming, information, and assistance for artists and theater workers who have struggled to stay employed while maintaining the safe conditions of their buildings and spaces and delivering digital programming. We have joined the call for racial justice and equity within Art New York and across the industry. We have made a public commitment to ensuring representative and respectful treatment of all employees, contractors, members, and supporters. We have more than 400 plus member theater companies who together represent the great majority of work being created, produced, and presented on any given day and in every season. Art New York's programs, initiatives, and advocacy represents New York City theater and the national theater industry we help shape. We are here because theater artists have stories to tell. 
If you haven't yet made a contribution, please remember, all gifts have impact. Your gift of any amount matters to us and to our members. Text A-R-T-N-Y to 44321 to give right now and anytime through May 1st. And we have three more nights of unique events celebrating Art New York and our member theaters. If you enjoyed what you saw tonight, please share the link in the description below with your networks by email and social media. You can tag us across platforms at ARTNY72. That's right, there's more. So please encourage everyone you know to attend the next three nights. Each donation is an all access pass for the full series. Tomorrow night, we're featuring a panel discussion with some amazing creators talking about accessibility in artistry. You'll hear from our honoree, Ali Stroker, and Roberto Cambero and Kirsten Sweeney from our staff will be joined by board member Mo Youssef to talk about Art New York's historic and future access programs in accessible spaces. See you tomorrow.